Hi there. Good morning. Thank you for joining. We're just going to wait for a few others. We'll give them 30 seconds or so, and then we'll get into this. All right. So what we're going to be covering today is eight industry insights to using LinkedIn for B2B lead generation. This isn't about becoming LinkedIn famous or going LinkedIn viral. What we really want to delve into today is how we can use LinkedIn as a tool to accelerate our lead generation. All right. Just give them 10 or 20 seconds more and then we'll go. Give us a few seconds. Brilliant. So what we'll do, we'll get into it then for you guys. So firstly, using the chat function, yes or no. Um, can I just see who actually has an active LinkedIn profile? Who's active on their LinkedIn, would you say? Interesting. Yep. Yeah. No. Okay, so some yeses, some noes. Okay, so you've got a little bit of mix there. And who actively uses LinkedIn as part of their current lead generation strategy? Or who's using LinkedIn as some sort of prospecting tool or researching tool in some somewhere or another? No, no. Okay, a few noes coming through. We've got a couple of yeses. Okay. So a little mixed bag. All right, perfect. Well, look, 20 to 30 minutes today on this webinar to go through um, eight industry insights using LinkedIn for B2B lead gen. So what I'll do, I'll get straight on with it. If you have any questions, please use the chat box. If I can answer them, I will. If I miss them, I'll get in touch with you after the call, all right? So in terms of why LinkedIn? So a lot of people say, you know, why LinkedIn? So firstly, just give you an overview. 58 million companies are already on LinkedIn, okay? 93% of B2B marketers use LinkedIn to generate leads. 77% of marketers agree that they see the best organic results from LinkedIn. 65 million users on LinkedIn are, are decision makers, which is what we all want to be talking to. And then LinkedIn is the top social media platform for B2B businesses. Need I say more? So if you're not using LinkedIn, use it. These are five of another hundred reasons why you should be utilizing LinkedIn. What we're going to be covering today, okay, we're going to look initially at the eight insights as to why we should be using LinkedIn to generate B2B leads, all right? We're then going to be looking to use LinkedIn and how to use it effectively as a prospecting and researching tool to accelerate our lead generation strategy. We're going to look at the key benefits to using LinkedIn in your lead generation strategy and then what type of messaging can help you generate the right results on LinkedIn, all right? It's got a bit to get through, short period of time, so what I'll do, I'll get straight into point one, prospect research. A lot of people are a lot of people are worried about sort of, you know, oh, this person saw um, that I viewed their profile. That's the platform, that's the tool. And I guess unfortunately that's how LinkedIn monetized their platform. Okay. Everything we go through today is about how to use LinkedIn the free way. And of course, then you have your sales navigator bolt on your LinkedIn premiums if you need to. So we want to go on our prospects profile. Okay, We want to look at all activity, look at what they're engaging with, what they're liking, what they're commenting on, what they're posting. This is step one. Okay, So we start to build a picture of what this person is like and how we can build some relevance when we go and actually speak to them. Okay, If, for whatever reason, they are relatively inactive on LinkedIn, which happens often, let me know on this call, some people are active, some people aren't. We can always go down to the bottom of their profile and look at what groups they're part of, what companies they're part of that they follow, maybe school of education. Is there anything relevant or similar to what you have done in there? Okay. So, for example, a great way we run campaigns internally if we're targeting a certain demographic. We've recently worked a campaign where the prospect was offered a afternoon morning of golf with the sales director for the company we're working with. How did we find these guys? How did we know they enjoyed golf? We used LinkedIn, we went on their profile, we looked at these groups and we found that these people were interested. So you're already halfway there to securing a meeting. Now a round of golf for every bit of prospecting we do can work out very expensive. So it doesn't have to be that. It can be something smaller. They may follow a couple of football teams. They may follow a couple of e-commerce businesses. It gives you a picture of what this person's interested in. So number one is prospect research, okay? Number two is also understanding that it is a dedicated B2B platform. LinkedIn know they're the best B2B platform out there, hence why they do certain things to ensure people stay on their platform. For example, if you press a link on LinkedIn and you try and direct yourself away from the website, 
it will pop up with a notification saying this link is taking you away from LinkedIn. They know they have the strongest presence, so they want you to stay on their platform. But we have to flip that and use that to our benefit. Any business that we want to find out about that is normally worth prospecting to <clears throat> will have some sort of footprint on LinkedIn. So following up the prospecting researching stage number one, we can use stage number two, the dedicated B2B platform, to really understand who we're prospecting to further, okay? So the business page, what's the size of the organization, okay? What is happening in these industries that you're trying to target? LinkedIn is dedicated B2B platform, let's utilize it rather than sit and look at it. A lot of people are here, they scroll through LinkedIn all the time. They don't do anything. They just think they're busy because they're working because they're scrolling. If that is you, spend that time at least researching, okay? Number three, join relevant groups and communities, okay? So a lot of people that I come across on LinkedIn, they're not part of many groups and communities. So for example, if you're in accounting, okay, you wanna be part of the top three to five accounting groups that there are on LinkedIn. There's multiple reasons for this. It's not because you're going to find your end client there, but you'll be able to see the types of messaging that your competitors are putting out there, and you'll be able to see what's getting results and what's not getting results. You will also meet strategic partners potentially in these groups that you can communicate with. So like-minded individuals, okay? Then we look at the messaging that I just referred to, what's happening in the industry, what trends are we picking up, and how can we then implement that into a lead generation strategy, okay? Your next great marketing plan might come from one of these groups and communities, and more often than not, lots of people I see are just not part of these groups, okay? So once again, using chat box, are, yes or no, are we part of relevant groups and communities to what we do in the industries we operate in? Yeah, Graham. Yeah, Alicia. Yeah. Liam. Yes. Brilliant. Perfect. And then hopefully everyone that said yes there, we're utilizing this. We're not just part of this. We're active on there, okay? Because, for example, we are part of a marketing group, okay? But often these marketing people on the group, they may need telemarketing services or they may need just LinkedIn lead generation services. So they would bring us on board. So you can meet strategic partners, work out your marketing messaging and create a very secure network through relevant groups and communities. Access to decision makers. The most annoying thing is when you're sat there making calls, when you're sending emails, you're sending leaflets, you're doing digital marketing, whatever it is you're doing, and you're not getting through to a decision maker. Okay, what LinkedIn gives you, it gives you a short window of opportunity to put yourself in front of anyone that you want. So when I say anyone, technically, Donald Trump even has a profile, whether you use it or not, I don't know. But anyone <coughs> you're targeting, you have a very short window of opportunity. If you get it right, you can then communicate with them. Whereas on the phone, you may get gatekeepers via emails, people have secure um Security installed on their Outlook, their Gmails to make sure these things go to junk and spam, okay? Via flyers or posts, often it's opened by admin systems. The one thing that I don't see much of is C-suite level decision makers, business owners, um, not having access to their own LinkedIn. And that's because typically their LinkedIn is on their phone. So just like we would message our friends, WhatsApp our friends, they then get a notification as well when they've been messaged. And we'll come on to later on how we can ensure that our messaging is right to get replies from our decision makers, okay? So if you're struggling to access decision makers, LinkedIn is a great tool to get in front of them. Step five, generating attendees to events. So some of you here, not all of you, some of you here will have come through the LinkedIn event that we set up, okay? So this is once again, top of funnel, okay? So we're not gonna generate any hot leads from LinkedIn events, okay? And inviting attendees but you're going to get people familiar with the brand of your, for whatever your brand may be. For us, it's your lead machine, okay? So whether you're running webinars, workshops, you want people to subscribe to your newsletter, LinkedIn have a function now where you can send a newsletter out, or you're looking to do a LinkedIn <clears throat> Live. Use LinkedIn to generate attendees to events. They allow you to invite unlimited people within your network. If you then have a team of people in your, in your organization, not, it's not just your network that you can invite, they can invite their network, okay? So typically you have access, if you've got a thousand connections, you could invite all thousand. If you've got 2000 connections and you're targeting the logistics market and you've got 200 relevant 
connections that work in the music <clears throat> industry, you can invite all 200 of them. Is anyone on this call currently using LinkedIn to generate attendees to events or running events through LinkedIn? Just using the chat box again. No. Yes. <clears throat> okay, great. Anyone else? No. No. Okay, no. Perfect. Yes. Ran through or so webinar. Brilliant, James. Perfect. Trying to no, no need yet. Perfect. Okay, cool. So using LinkedIn, what you're going to do, you're going to create a platform, okay, to get attendees to these events. Where LinkedIn falls short a little bit, okay. Once again, it's that if you put the link to the event in the bio, when people click on it, it's going to give them the objection that you're being taken away from LinkedIn. So our approach with that, if someone accepts the invite, we then send them a personal message saying, thanks for accepting the invite. Here's the link, go and sign up, okay? So another touch point before they actually go to your landing page to go and sign up to the webinar, workshop, <clears throat> LinkedIn Live, whatever that may be, okay? Number six, creating your own personal brand. So what you'll find is within your demographic and the side graphics that you operate in, you will probably be able to put your top 20 clients or so in a room together and they will all probably get on. And that's because your sales function, you as the MD, you as the marketing director, have naturally created a client base who probably share similar interests to yourself. I'll be very surprised if in this modern day, where there's so many different services and products on offer, if you have clients that don't actually share the same <clears throat> values or are interested in similar things, okay? So by creating our own personal brand on LinkedIn, we can welcome those people that we know, if we get in front of, we can typically convert. OK, a lot of people and I see a lot of it are putting any type of content out on LinkedIn, their cats, their dogs, their kids is a good one. You know, everyone like, loves a post about a kid on LinkedIn because, you know, their children, everyone's got sentimental. But we want to really look at who is our top target demographic. Don't try and cater for all and do not try and cater your personal brand for likes because you could get 100 likes, but you're targeting CFOs but the likes are coming from just local people in your area, um, you know, VA, marketing companies, accounting companies, but you need CFOs, okay? And now a lot of people, they, they get lost chasing likes and comments. We want to create our personal brand so it talks to the market that when we sit down in our monthly marketing meeting and that, that demographic is drawn out, our LinkedIn has to be talking the same language, okay? To so create our own personal brand that resonates with who we're targeting through our marketing strategies and lead generation strategies, so when they land on our profile, they know exactly who we are and that we would typically get on with them, okay? LinkedIn is used often now by clients. If you send an email or get a phone call or meet someone at an event, they'll go to LinkedIn to vet you. Sometimes more, more, more advanced than them actually going to your website. So they'll go to LinkedIn to vet you before they go to your website because people buy people, okay? People don't buy companies, okay? Step seven. LinkedIn business page. Who here has an active LinkedIn business page that they're often growing? Yes or no in the box? Yeah, Nick, no. Yeah. No. Yes, no. Okay, cool. LinkedIn business pages are prices, okay? Every month, LinkedIn allows us to have 250 credits, okay, to go and invite 250 connections um, or connections of people within your organization if they're adding with the page to follow your LinkedIn business page. Once again, top of funnel. The way it works, if 100 come back and follow your page, you then get 100 credits back, okay? So firstly, we want to be utilizing those credits, inviting the right target demographic to follow our page. Secondly, ensure the content that's going out on the business page is relevant to who we've invited. And finally, we then draw that back and have a strategy on how we are then gonna get these people from the top of the funnel to the bottom of the funnel, okay? Is it that you have well, someone in your BD team is responsible for contacting the people that are following the page? And look, you're following your lead machine's LinkedIn page. Is there any reason? Um, what, what brought you to follow the page? What do you find interesting? Now, a lot of people say to me, coach, going out to them, notifying them that you're following the page. There could be a fear that they may unfollow the page. Well, okay, great. If they're not interested, unfollow the page. Okay. But typically, people will follow your page because they're either interested in what you do or they have an interest in your content. The worst thing that can come from this conversation is you've solidified your relationship with someone who follows the page. They may not have a need now, but they will have a need in the future and they'll know who you are. The best case scenario, they have a need, hence why they've followed your business page and you're talking to them. 
So we need to use our LinkedIn business page, not just for, um, not just for our demographics to see, but use it as top of funnel. How can we get these people through our funnel to generate them as meetings and appointments for our sales team, our directors to go and sit, okay? So LinkedIn business page, using it as the top of funnel tool. Now, finally, showcasing your expertise. Who here is putting value-driven content out on LinkedIn platforms, business page, personal pages, yes or no? Yeah, yeah, no, no. Just made of Tuesday, it's nice, Nick. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, perfect, yeah, Lynn, brilliant. So if we have our certain demographic that we're following and prospecting to on LinkedIn, we have to portray ourselves as an expert, okay? People, like I've <clears> learned, <throat> they have a choice through multiple services and products. People are now looking to buy from experts. I recently spoke at an event where I talked about value-driven content, and it's really important that we're putting our value-driven content out there in front of our potential target markets, okay? So whether that value-driven content is in the form of a free resource? Could it be a case study? Is it a short form video? Okay. Is it a testimony? What are we putting out there to make someone go, this guy's the expert, let's talk. Now, often people get lost on how to showcase your expertise, so they just share wins. But everyone knows in business, you don't win every day. And it can become a little bit um, disingenuous when you're just constantly celebrating your wins. Okay. So what do we have to do on LinkedIn? Well, we take our, our emotions away from it and we look at how can we showcase our expertise. Now, if you're working in an industry or targeting an industry where there's constant changes of governance legislation, okay, something may, may be being implemented on the horizon that you may think all of your audience are aware of, but if it's three months out, four months out, they may not be aware of it. So can we create an explainer blog potentially on what's to come to share, to showcase our expertise, to say, look, we know what we're talking about, rather than pitching to you, Here's an educational document, read it, you'll naturally come to us, okay? Even if they know about it, they may not know what they need to do to achieve whatever the new standard legislation change may be, okay? So let's use LinkedIn to showcase expertise, share the wins, don't overshare them, but also share value-driven content, all right? So we're about 20 minutes in. Um, what types of messaging gets answers? Now, a lot of people, they come to us and they send all different types of messaging. Who currently is sending DMs on LinkedIn uh, to decision makers, sending messages to decision makers on LinkedIn? Yeah. No, yes. No, no, no. Okay. And for those that said no, just in a short sentence, can you, can you pop in here, you know, why potentially? Why you're not? Anyone? Give it a couple of seconds if they're typing. Don't want to bother people with the wrong content. Yeah, head trash plays a lot, Alicia. You'd be surprised. A lot of people I speak to, you know, they're always worried about bothering the decision maker with the wrong content or something that's not applicable to them. Anyone else? We'll crap on if anyone else comes in the chat box, we can then discuss that, okay? So I have quite an abrupt um, message to LinkedIn messaging and people always post on LinkedIn, oh, I've got this DM. Well, you know, it's sales. What, what do you want salespeople to do? Because if you had a salesperson and they weren't prospecting, there'd be a different type of conversation had internally. It's like the age old conversation of we don't take unsolicited calls, but then they've got 10 man telemarketing dialing out. You know, it happens so often. So Alicia's exactly spot on there. You don't want to bother people with the wrong content. And that all gets drawn back to step one of any good lead generation strategy, which is finding out your demographic and your psychographic and what they want. If you have value to offer a certain market and you feel that's going to benefit them, do not be afraid of bothering people with the wrong content. It's no different to making 100 phone calls a day and the phone going down three times, okay? I, I see a lot of people on LinkedIn. I only connect with people that I know, but how are you going to ever grow your network, okay? I don't want to send messages because I don't want to be, people to bother me. 
uh, people to be bothered, and I don't like when people send me messages. So I don't want people to bother me. Well, how how do you potentially find out about new services? It's business, okay? We've got to market our services, and LinkedIn messaging is a great way of doing that if done correctly, okay? So I have four clear pillars on LinkedIn and a few other tips, okay? Firstly, we have to make sure our messaging is relevant, okay? And then, Alicia, that would totally um, get rid of that fear that that potentially may be there, okay? Is it relevant to who we're targeting? For example, if I go and send a message about lead generation to another lead generation company, you know, they have every right to come back and go, have you not done your research? So using step one, researching our prospect, making that re um, message relevant, okay? Number two, concise. These messages will typically be read by people on their phones. So try and keep the message between at least 75 to 100 words, no more than 100 words, okay? Because what we don't want them to do is call the message up on the phone. They're probably getting multiple other messages on their phone as well that day on LinkedIn. We want to stand out, we want to be clear, we want to be concise, and we want to be straight to the point, okay? We know what they want because we've done our research. Let's tell them that we know that and let's put a clear CTA in. So clear call to action, that's step three. So what is our call to action? Is it clear? Is it punchy? Okay. I don't like when I see, would you mind jumping on a call? Why would they mind? Or do you have just 15 minutes? You know, you'd rather secure a one in four for a call for half an hour and have two 15 minute calls when it's just the 15 minute call. You know, we're offering them value. Sure. So for value, they have to give us their time. Okay. So a clear CTA. Do you have 30 minutes in the diary where we can sit down and discuss this? Okay. So we're not stepping around the CTA. This is where a lot of sales and marketing people go wrong because they're nervous of getting that answer, the nerves show in the messaging. So clear call to action. And then finally, a rule of three. You don't know this person, they don't know you before the message. Typically, if you go to someone and tell, say to them they're having a challenge or ask them if they're having a challenge, they may not give you the answer that is truthful to them because they don't know or trust you yet. So with the rule of three, you look at the three main pain points, why someone works with your business or your organization, and you may put something like this. Typically, the clients we work with, we find they suffer with X, Y, and Z. Does this sound like you? So all of a sudden, what we've done, we've put our prospect at ease to say, you're not the only one. All of our clients, they are facing one, two, or three. Do any of these sound like you? Psychologically, they're going to be more at ease. So actually, yeah, X, that does sound a bit like me, okay? All of a sudden, you've got them engaged. You've got them with something to come back to. I also see a lot of messaging. I read it and I go, what do you want me to reply? That goes to the clear CTA and the clear pain point question, okay? So relevant, concise, clear call to action and a rule of three and 75 to 100 words, okay? If we're not using LinkedIn direct messaging, that suggests to me your other marketing strategies are brilliant. Keep going with them. You're happy with where your business is and you don't want to accelerate because you're comfortable or you're just scared of getting the wrong response. But it's no different to any other form of marketing that we would do, because they can always say no, okay? The worst one's actually people that don't reply because you don't know where you stand. So we wanna help you guys benefit from this webinar as much as you can. If you require any help in creating messaging that generates the correct answers or amending current messaging, please leave a message in the chat saying yes. I've got one of my colleagues on this call, they'll write your name down. We'll be in touch, and then what we'll do, we'll set up a 30-minute free consultancy call where we can just go through maybe what you're currently sending or maybe what you're not sending and put together some messaging for your target demographic that you can then go out and trial yourself or one of your team can. So if that interests you, just leave yes in the chat box. We'll be in touch afterwards to share some value on how to create messaging that generates the right answers. So I'll give you a couple of minutes if anyone's interested in that. Billy, yes, please, of course. We can be in touch. Anyone else? Just give it a couple of seconds. Jay Drew, yep. Yeah. Harry, yep. Yeah. Cool. Yes, message Max, we'll do Nick, no worries. Cool. Well, if you do change your mind, pop yes in there and we'll um we'll go through that. But 
I just want to wrap this up with two final slides. I know I've just gone over 20 minutes. So why should you be using LinkedIn? OK, so firstly, guys, we've got to provide value in everything that I talk about. I always talk about providing value to our prospects. OK, so step one for LinkedIn, we need to be providing value. OK, value is the new currency for B2B lead generation. OK, the days of bank details over the phone, people making quick decisions are gone. Now are the days of the informed buyer, the buyer typically know everything they need to. They just need a bit more value, a bit more expertise, okay? Step two, deliver education. Portray yourself as an expert so you can deliver heaps and heaps of education. A lot of people say to me, Coach, I'm worried of giving too much away. That is fine. Do not worry, okay? These people are specialists in what they do. They may try to do what you're doing, but they'll never be able to do it to your expertise. So let them. All that does is it, it increases their urgency and increases their pain points, and they'll come back to you and go, do not coach, you helped me with this. It didn't work. Can I get some help? Okay. So let's really use LinkedIn as a platform to deliver education rather than posts with your cats or your dogs or whatever you may be. Okay. Number three, build trust. Okay. Let's build a network, a community of, of trust on LinkedIn. Okay. Where people know us, we know people, we're interacting, we're commenting. Value again is being offered on LinkedIn as a platform. Okay. And what this will do, it will create a prospect list, a target demographic of people who all of a sudden aren't cold. They know you from LinkedIn. They may have commented on the post. They may have liked the post. They may follow the business page. Whatever it may be in those initial eight steps, let's build trust. So when we phone them, when we send them a letter, when we send them an email, we can send a personalized message to them, okay? And we can treat it as a warm call rather than a typical cold call or a cold email or cold leaflet, okay? And finally, that leads me on creating yourself a network that provides you with an active pipeline. OK, we still to this day for certain campaigns purchase lists for our clients. I can tell you one thing. Taking data off of your own LinkedIn accounts and engaging with them because they already know who you are is has such a better conversion rate than purchasing 1000, 2000, 5000 bits of cold data where you have to warm it up. So use LinkedIn to extract people from LinkedIn onto your own CRM platform, and then you do your lead generation strategy with them. But part one is LinkedIn. So we're looking to provide value, deliver education, build trust, and then creating an active pipeline through our network, okay? Sorry, bear with me. Perfect. So finally, guys, what I want to finish on, okay? The lead generation landscape is changing, and as a forward-thinking B2B businesses, we need to adapt the way that we engage with prospects. The buyer has the world at the fingertips and it's our job to ensure they know about us before they know they need us, okay? What I mean about this, let's not be short-sighted and go for those that want a meeting today. Let's pick those up along the way, but let's create an active pipeline of prospects who want to use us, but they are going to drop in over a six, 12 month period with the relevant touch points, relevant strategy, you providing the value and the education. If you have any questions at all, guys, please use the chat box to pop them in there, and I'm more than happy to answer any. If not, if you'd like to get in touch afterwards, if you have any other questions, please let me know. Um, but that sees us bang on half an hour. Brilliant. No worries, Greg. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, thank you very much for attending. We do appreciate everyone attending and hope there's some good value there. As I say, if you do crack on and, you know, sort of do it yourself, that's fine. If you just want some advice, pick your phone up to the office. More than happy to help, you know, half an hour, hour, whatever it may take. Um, let's start transacting value. Brilliant. Glad to it's helpful. Um, and what we'll do, we'll get in touch when it's our next webinar, okay? It will be in three months' time. We'll run four a year. It's the first one of 2023, and we'll, um, we'll send the invites around for the next one. But thank you very much for attending, guys.